Time to get real, reality TV aficionados. Welcome to the Giorgio Says Podcast. I'm your host, the one and only Giorgio Takanakis, and I'm here serving you the juiciest updates on all your favorite reality shows weekly, as well as the hottest pop culture trends and even exclusive interviews that will leave you wanting more. This podcast will keep you on the edge of your seat. We definitely need to talk about this. The Giorgio Says Podcast starts now. All right, my friends, welcome back to another episode of Giorgio Says the Podcast. So today's going to be a little bit of a supersized episode because I'm going to recap Beverly Hills and Miami. More so on the Miami side, there was a lot more that happened in that episode of Miami. Beverly Hills was, it was, it was okay. It just, it, nothing really, nothing really happened. And based on my TikTok and Instagram recaps of the episode, a lot of you felt the same way. So I don't want to spend too much time recapping stuff um, because it would just be pulling, it would just be pulling out of nothing. There was a few things that happened, but overall it was pretty much a snooze of an episode in my opinion. Um, I do feel like we're coming towards the tail end of this uh, season because they obviously already filmed the reunion. That always lets us know that we're coming towards the end. So um, we're going to break that down. I'm also going to give some quick tea. It seems that uh, Jennifer Pendranti from Real Housewives of Orange County is in some legal problems regarding her yoga studio. So we're going to break that down a little bit in the quick tea segment, and then we will jump right into recapping both Beverly Hills and Miami. So I hope everyone's having a fantastic Friday so far. The weekend is upon us. Next week is Valentine's Day. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and jump right into some quick tea. All right, my friends. So today's quick tea is centered around Jennifer Pendranti. As we know, she is filming her second season of Real Housewives of Orange County currently. But uh, some news broke where, you know, it seems that she's in some legal trouble because her landlords, where she's renting her yoga studio, excuse me, her yoga studio from, uh, it's her, her two business partners, and I believe her ex-husband had also uh, invested in getting into the space. So I want to break that down for you guys. Now, a, a couple months ago, I did give a full background on Ryan and his shady work past. So this is not looking good for her. I'm not sure if this will actually come up this season. It may, it may not. It really all depends with what else is going on. But I figured I'd break it down for you guys because I think a lot of you um, are also on the same page that there's just something not right here with Jen. And um, yes, she did block me after I did that story on Ryan, but I really don't care. She's not someone that I'm... um, I'm not concerned about that. And quite frankly, see you later. But nonetheless, we need to get into this because it's quite interesting. And a lot of you guys had some feedback yesterday when I recapped it on Instagram and TikTok. And you kind of pointed the finger at the landlord being greedy. But I want to clarify that the terms of her lease were uh, clear up front. It's just that somewhere along the way, I don't really know what is preventing her from paying the rent, but the landlord has had it and they have served her uh, with this lawsuit. So let's get into it. So basically, um, she has not been paying rent on her yoga studio in Santa Margarita, California. And actually back in November of 2019, they, uh, they meaning Jen, her two business partners that run it, uh, the yoga studio is called Devi Rebel Yoga. We've seen this featured on last season of Real Housewives of Orange County. We see her post. Well, I don't see it anymore because she's blocked me, but she usually posts about the yoga studio. And if you guys remember, she kind of made a little shady dig at Tamara's Cut Fitness gym closing and saying that her business was able to survive the pandemic. But this news makes it a little bit uh, interesting because you know, maybe she was, 
not paying the rent to kind of uh, adjust for the fact that she wasn't getting the same amount of business. I'm just speculating, allegedly. However, back in 2019, when she opened the yoga studio, she, you know, placed a deposit, which you normally would have to do. And it was around $18,300. But fast forward to November of 2023, they've allegedly stopped paying rent altogether. And the rent is about $9,875 a month. Now, a lot of you guys said that that is astronomical. Why would, why would anyone be charging that as a landlord? And why would she be paying that as a tenant when you're clearly trying to run a business? A lot of you also, and I'm not familiar with yoga studios, but a lot of you reached out and said that yoga studios don't make a huge amount of money. So this amount of rent doesn't really make sense for the situation. Uh, but the yoga studio is in the Plaza El Paso Center. And, you know, Jennifer was slapped with this lawsuit. But the lawsuit is for $133,000. Now, I'm sure that's inclusive of damages for the landlord. And at the time that the story was put out, she had not responded to it yet. But I think the issue is, is where a lot of people got hung up was the part where the first six months, her rent was $4,651. Now that seems to be more in line with, you know, a lease of that kind and all of that stuff. But I guess, and again, I don't have her lease in front of me, so I'm not sure, but it seems like from the way it was written that perhaps the lease was set up in a way to kind of give her a deal where maybe the first six months she would pay half of what the normal rent for that space would be to get her up and running, to get her business going so that she's not eating up all of her cost in paying this high rent. Now, I personally feel like almost 10 grand a month for a yoga studio is quite a bit of money. Like maybe perhaps find something a little bit cheaper. I know that, you know, things are at an all-time high, but this was back in 2019 before uh, the pandemic. So I guess after the six months was up, the landlord went back to what the normal rent rate would have been, which is $98.75 a month. Now, in February of 2023, the landlord did a uh, give her and her business partners a notice to pay or quit. And even with that, the payments of the rent were still outstanding. So they have basically had enough. They've clearly tried to work with her or tried to warn her. So they've gone ahead and slapped her with this $133,000 um, in unpaid rent lawsuit situation. Now, I have my own opinions around this. I have been hearing a lot of chatter around even allegedly she's been having issues paying rent on this house she's renting in Orange County. And when I did some digging, it seems that, you know, she did move into a new rental home, but that's not uncommon. A lot of housewives do that because obviously they're on this show and they 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 want to have a nice house to film in and, and yada 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 but she is with this guy ryan now i'm not going to go back into that whole thing with ryan if you want to check that out you can check out my feed uh i have a whole breakdown of his work past uh but i think what's really confusing to me is that there's a lot of like weird stuff going on behind the scenes and you know i noticed it mainly when I was at BravoCon. There was a lot of chatter. She was not there or present for most of it. I think she showed up for one day and then we never saw her again. But we did see Ryan a lot more, which is strange um, because we also have been hearing chatter that he's involved in some sort of like betting business or whatnot that also has been put on radar for being shady. I'm not really familiar with how those types of businesses work, but it seems that she is really, really attached to this guy, Ryan. And 
in my opinion, I think from what it seems, she was probably chasing Ryan around. She was filming the show. She wasn't really putting the focus in on her yoga business. I'm not sure how much money a yoga studio normally brings in on average, but a lot of you guys, like I said, told me that it's not the most profitable business. So it could be perhaps that she's so invested in Ryan and it seems that Ryan has a strong hold on her. So I'm not sure if he's kind of played into this, but if he's doing all these things on the side and he's making this kind of money and based on the money that he's been able to make off the shady past of his work experience from, you know, prior to meeting Jen, I would think that he would at least be able to help her invest in this business if it's so important to her, which it seems to be. So I'm not sure where they go from here. I'm Like I said, I'm not sure if they're going to bring this up on the show, but it is clear that she is, you know, she's joining a lot of other Bravo Lebs who have these types of issues. I mean, are you even a Bravo Leb if you don't have a lawsuit or some sort of uh, scandal in the press? It'll be interesting to see how, how things unfold for her this next coming season, specifically with Ryan, because, you know, it was a big topic of discussion last season. And I do feel that Tamara will sit this one out. I don't think she wants anything to do with this. Again, I don't think she wants to be pointed as the bad guy. And although a lot of what she said was true last season, I do feel that, you know, Tamara tried to give her an opportunity on the show to let her know, like, you need to be honest, you need to be upfront regarding her ex-husband and how that all ended and all that stuff. Now, I did hear that she's also taking her ex-husband back to court for spousal support, which apparently was agreed upon during their divorce, but she's going back to try to retrieve that. So it seems that she's in a financial situation that is a bit overwhelming. I mean, $133,000 is a lot of money. Also, almost $10,000 a month for a, a, a space to you know, have a yoga studio is quite a, is quite a lot of money. Like I, I just, like, I'm getting all mixed up thinking about how, how much money <laughs> must be coming out of that account. Uh, but yeah, I am keeping my eye on this story. I'm not sure what the update is. This was from, I believe two days ago when I saw the article and I believe Radar initially reported on this. So shout out to Radar Online. But yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think of this. Are you surprised? I, I'm not, obviously nothing shocks me anymore and probably doesn't shock a lot of you anymore, but I will keep my eye on this story because, you know, that's what I do. But um, yeah, so hopefully she can get it sorted. Hopefully she can try to settle this in some way. Maybe Ryan can dig into his pockets and help her we will keep you posted. Well, I will keep you posted rather. But um, so yeah, that's the quick tea. Now we need to jump into Beverly Hills quickly because as I mentioned, there's not a whole ton that happened. It was pretty much a snooze fest. And then we got to jump into the Miami of it all because man, oh man, the gondola ride from hell, probably the worst chaotic boat ride we've seen on Bravo yet. These ladies never fail. They deliver every single week. I actually think this season is trumping over all the other shows right now, in my opinion. I think this cast is perfection. I think after seeing the reunion looks yesterday, which I did post about, so go check that out on my Instagram or TikTok at Giorgio Says, but they, they know how to pull off a theme. It was done. This is probably like the best reunion looks we've seen ever, at least in a while. So we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to jump into Beverly Hills quickly and then dive right into Real Housewives of Miami. Yummy Nutrition is an inventive, people-focused nutrition company committed to providing innovative products that make taking your daily supplements simple and delicious. Their products are formulated with quality ingredients you can pronounce and flavors your taste buds will absolutely enjoy. And at the core of it all, they lead with purpose. Golly for Good is an initiative committed to playing a profound role in supporting the health of our planet as well as our local communities. 
learn more about their initiatives such as B Corp certification, Vitamin Angels Partnership, and Eden Reforestation Projects at their Golly for Good page. And if you use my special code, the Giorgio says at checkout, you will receive a special discount. Now let's get back into the episode. All right, my friends, thank you so much for sticking around. So yeah, as I mentioned, Beverly Hills, we will recap it quickly. There wasn't a whole ton that happened. No real big moment. What I do know is Merce is not in the purse anymore. You guys, if you guys watched, God bless Sutton. She really, this was super important to her. So I'm not, I'm not trying to make a joke of this. Obviously this is not, uh, this was very serious for her and she put a lot of time and energy and, and, and wanted to honor him in a proper way. But it also was a multitude of other things. She was grieving her father. We found out that she had lost her father's ashes from moving so many times. And then she's also still grieving her divorce from Christian. So now that he's moving to London, I think there's just all these things that are coming back up for her. So this was an important moment, but she did have a good intention of bringing the women together so that they could release whatever was hurting them so that they could all move into a better space. So we get the ladies all together. It's a beautiful day in Spain. And we have this moment where, you know, Sutton is ready to release Merce's ashes, get him out of the purse and out into the ocean. Now, I said this in my recap, but I could have told all of the ladies when you're standing up that high, overlooking the ocean, nine times out of 10, the wind is blowing towards you. So trying to throw anything towards the ocean at that height is more than likely just going to blow right back at you. Okay. A good example of this is when you are at the beach and you are done and you're ready to go and you want to go shake your towel off, right? If you've ever, and I've done this before and I've gotten sand in my mouth for like what seems to be days, but when you shake that towel and you're shaking it towards the ocean, all that sand just comes in and flies right into your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your, your, your butt crack, whatever have you. And it's, it's sand in the mouth is the worst. If you've ever had sand in your mouth, it's like, it's gritty and you feel like it's, it's never, it's never gone. Like it's always in there. Nonetheless, so she goes to release the ashes. And don't you know, the ashes blow right back towards all the women. And poor Garcelle got hit with most of it. Kyle had some of it go into her mouth. I can't imagine what that must taste like, but I don't want to know. But it was really... And I'm, again, I'm not trying to be disrespectful because obviously like this was an important moment for Sutton, but my God, that, how do you even act? Like how, how do you act in that moment? Like I probably would have just done what Kyle did, just kind of run off and just kind of like oh, spit it out and like try to like not be so uh, obnoxious, I guess. But like, I, I don't do well with things like that, especially when it's someone's ashes, like I, that equals the same thing for me as like when I see someone throwing up, it makes me immediately want to go throw up too. Cause I can't, it's like, that's my trigger. So from there, the ladies then head to, where do they, they go for a walk to head back to the sprinter because they obviously have dinner later. And so they need to get ready. And before that, the ladies all go up and they say what they're going to release. Let me not jump ahead of myself. Before they go for their walk and head back to the, the rental home they're staying in, they, they all go up and they, they say what they're going to release and then they throw their necklace of flowers into the ocean. Now, another point I want to make is a lot of you guys said, how is that not harmful to throw those into the ocean? But Sutton did clarify on the after show that she made sure that all of that stuff was like biodegradable. Like it, it's not like plastic rings that are just going to be floating. So she did take the extra precaution, which I appreciate because I did think that too, when she, when she said they were going to be throwing these in the ocean, I was like, well, how's that going to work? 
um, without harming any of the the wildlife out in the ocean. But she did clarify that it was biodegradable. Um, but Garcelle goes up and she basically talks about how, you know, she has this struggle with men in her life, but it goes back to when her dad left and then she didn't get to see him again until she was like 14. And then when her husband cheated on her and had that affair, she's been very guarded and very protective of her heart, but that it gets lonely sometimes. And she wants to let go of that so that she can be a little bit more open, which I thought was beautiful. Um, Cause if, you know, if you know anything about Garcelle, she's, she's looking for love. You know, I don't think she's completely closed off to it. Um, and the next up was Dorit and Dorit obviously is, is going to talk about her PTSD. She wants to try to let go of that, even though she gets hurt when PK tries to misconstrue her trauma with high maintenance behavior, which I'm going to be honest. I think I'm not going to say I completely disagree with PK but I do believe that she's clearly dealing with something because it it, it triggers her a lot and she's going to try to let that go so that she can try to be more present and be happier and not be so concerned um, with that kind of taking over her life. Crystal then goes up and then she divulges that you know she's going to try to let go of the the hurt that is you know having her brother move back to Asia, which she does understand why he's doing that because a few episodes back, they had breakfast together, Crystal and her brother, and he expressed to her that he needs to separate himself from Crystal and their mom because, you know, of what happened with his last fiance. You know, they kind of came into the middle of things and put a lot of pressure and intimidated his ex-fiance. So I think he's learning that he's got to separate himself from that and make his own decisions and be more independent, which I respect. And I think Crystal respects it too, but I think she's just worried that maybe he won't come back, uh, which I don't think that's the case. I think he just needs some time to break away and, and just kind of solidify his own way of living and make his own decisions and not have it be around what Crystal and maybe his mom um, have opinions on. So I thought that was beautiful because we really don't hear a lot about Crystal outside of you know, what's going on in this group of women. So that was beautiful. Um, but then Anne-Marie goes up and listen, I'm not saying what Anne-Marie's wasn't authentic. It's just maybe we don't know. I don't know Anne-Marie enough for whatever she was trying to like. It just almost felt like it, it didn't hit me like the other women's stuff. But again, it's because we don't know Anne-Marie all too well. And all we do know of her is that she's been obsessed with Sutton's esophagus and then trying to you know come for Crystal and then we get Erica which I okay I understand a lot of you guys thought this was like in poor taste I do feel like Erica is hurt because again Erica's a cancer so she comes off bitey right we've seen that side of her we know that side of her but this season we are seeing a new Erica I've said this before, I did not have the best opinions of Erica and the way that she reacted in this whole Girardi scandal. I've been very vocal about that. I've had a lot of pushback from Erica fans, but at some point I did see that she was actually changing her tune. I did feel that she was humbling herself and I felt like she had learned how to navigate through this as best as anyone could in that situation. We don't really know all the ins and outs. We, you know, we all have our opinions, sure. But what I took away from it, and I always try to be empathetic uh, because you never really understand what someone's really going through, but trying to imagine where that puts her in this whole situation had to have been very, very uh, stressful, very hurtful, um, and probably made her feel alone. Like her back literally was probably up against the wall. And we did see that on the show. She was in the hot seat for the last couple seasons. So when she started to come off more humble, I said, you know, it's not fair to keep being so harsh on someone who's clearly just trying to move on with their life. And um, 
you know, I made my peace with her on that at BravoCon. We had a nice little conversation and uh, she acknowledged that on one of her lives. So I appreciate that. But, you know, I was like, I'm excited for her this season because I'm seeing this funnier side, this lighter side of her. But she went up there and basically said, you know, she wants to let go of all the hurt and pain that the women contributed to. And that she has, not you know, she's turned a new page in her life and she's ready to let go of that old, old stuff. Now, obviously this threw the women for a loop. But if you remember at the very beginning of the season, she uh, told the women she doesn't really trust any of them. And listen, if we're going to be honest, how can you really trust any of these women? We're on a reality show. We have to talk about the elephant in the room. Someone's got to bring this stuff up. So I'm not shocked that she said this when she was tossing her flowers, but I think maybe it was the wrong time. Maybe she could have spun it a little differently. So there's still that little bit of bitey Erica in there. Again, she's a cancer, but she's super duper sensitive. That's how cancers are. They're very like, they come off harsh as a defense mechanism, but internally they're like, they're little babies. Um, so from there, and this is really strange to me, and I do think this comes up at the reunion, but it's, it, I wonder why Erica only isolated Crystal out in the in the whole earrings situation but nonetheless crystal when they all start walking back crystal and erica are walking together and crystal acknowledges that she heard what erica said and she she took some accountability and said listen i'm really sorry for contributing to any of the pain you were you were dealing with truly and i think erica really appreciated that because i think out of all the women for crystal to be the one to apologize i mean there was other women questioning her as well that didn't really acknowledge that and i if they did i we we didn't see it but she's clearly hurt that the women are not coming to her and being like oh my gosh you were right we're sorry that we didn't you know trust you or that we didn't believe you or we questioned too much on certain things um so then the ladies get ready for their last dinner in Spain, okay? And not all too much happened. They went up on stage. They had their little dance. It seemed like a fun, you know, last night in Spain. The ladies actually seemed like they were having a good time on this trip, if I'm honest. And I love watching that, but there was just something about the episode that just felt like it was just slow. Not bad. It was just slow. Um, but at the dinner table, you know, Garcelle brings up you know, the fact that Erica had said that when she was releasing her flowers and just said, well, where are you at now with the group? Do you still feel that way? Like when you did at the beginning of the season, when you said you didn't trust any of the ladies and Erica says, look, trust has to be earned, which I agree with, but that she feels more comfortable in the group, which is huge because I mean, for her to feel comfortable enough to relax enough to have fun is, is probably leaps and bounds. Because I think first, for the, at least the last couple of seasons, she was on a strong defense. She was, she was ready to go at anybody that was going to try to come for her. But now she seems like she's more relaxed. She can kind of let loose with the women. She can have fun. But is the trust automatically going to go right back to where it was? Probably not. It's going to take her some time. And that's fair. So then Sutton makes a toast to Erica because she does have this residency in Vegas. But Sutton's a little bit irked that Erica did not do the full animation of delivering some of the tickets for the residency to like she did with the other ladies. She didn't extend that to Sutton, even though Erica said everyone's invited. Sutton felt some type of way about it. But I think Sutton also understands from the viewpoint that Sutton was the main one questioning her. So that's probably the last person she would have drove over to her house to like present her with these like big residency tickets. Um, and that's pretty much the the trip. They, like I said, they get up on stage, they do their little dance. Um, and then we're back in Beverly Hills again. And Dorit stops by Kyle's house to have a conversation. And it seems that Kyle's opening up a little bit more about the issues in her marriage. And she tells Dorit that, you know, because Mauricio's running this agency and because it's growing so rapidly and because he's putting his blood, sweat, and tears into it, it seems that all of his energy goes into managing that 
And if there's a problem in the business, he'll spend all his time and energy fixing those problems. But when there's an issue in their marriage, he doesn't show up in the same way. And so I think that's probably part of it. But again, I don't think that she's being completely upfront. I think that there's a multitude of things that have happened. And I think Kyle went through a lot when her friend, you know, offed herself. And, you know, this was her dear best friend. So like a sister, right? Having that happen, but maybe having some un- other underlying issues. Because she also tells Dorit, Mauricio is not a fighter. They don't fight, right? But Kyle's a Capricorn. So, you know, Capricorns are straight shooter. They're going to go for it. And they, if they don't like something, they're going to be vocal about it. Well, that clearly doesn't impact Mauricio in a way where he wants to get in there and, and fight it out with her. He'd rather just let it. Like, do, 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 this is not happening. And I think Kyle got sick of that because I think also, and I'm just, again, I'm speculating because I'm not in their house, but I would think that with all the rumors that have come out with Mo and these alleged lady friends along the way, plus her friend no longer being here, plus he's constantly traveling for the agency for whatever reason, I think she felt like, wow, I'm left to deal with everything on my own. And I don't like that. And I deserve more and I deserve better. Now, she's not going to say all the the things regarding the alleged infidelities that have been thrown out there multiple times. But. And she may never. Right. She even said to Garcelle when Garcelle asked her, like, if if there was cheating, would you say it? And Kyle said, I don't know. And I think what she's saying is like, I don't know if I would share that with this group because that that could spin out into a massive thing. And I don't think she wants to do that to her kids. I don't think this is more to do with Mauricio. I think this has everything to do with her girls. She doesn't want to put that on them and make them uh, maybe look at him in a, in a negative way. So she she keeps certain things to herself. And listen, she has the right to do that, right? She has the right to keep some of it to herself, or at least until she figures it out where she's clear on it and she can actually speak on it when she's not feeling so jumbled and confused. Um, Dorit also shares that, you know, traveling impacts the marriage. And listen, that's not a lie. I mean, travel can literally put a lot of space in between two people. And if it's happening quite a bit, your connection gets thinner and thinner. So when there is an issue, it makes it harder to, to, you know, resolve it or try to come to terms with something. So I understood it from that point. I mean, you know, I think Kyle's really trying her best to be as upfront. And I know I've even given her crap, but more around the Morgan Wade stuff, because I do feel like the Morgan Wade was thrown in there as a deflection so that people wouldn't dig too much into the marriage stuff and kind of more speculate on the Morgan Wade thing. So I think Morgan was there to serve that purpose. Not that they're not really friends, but I think that that was her strategy this season. Um, but that was pretty much it, guys. Uh, the episode wasn't, like I said, it wasn't super exciting by any means. It wasn't a horrible episode, just wasn't really anything to write home about. So now, now we need to get into the Miami of it all because man, oh man, like I said at the top of this episode, these ladies are bringing it and they all are fantastic in their own way but together it's like the perfect blend of personalities and they're so fiery but we've got to pick up where we left off last week which was the gondola ride from hell which only got worse it only got worse okay so we're in this like creepy baby doll zoo of a like witchcraft situation right julia is full on triggered as anyone in her situation. Poor thing. I mean, that is not, I really feel like the producers went a little too far with this because they obviously know what her trauma is around that. But then they stay there and then some of the women get off the gondola to go use the restroom. I get it. When you got to go, you got to go. But like, 
I wouldn't have stepped foot on that property at all. Something about it just screams bad juju. I don't want to, I don't want that energy on me. I don't want to like, I think even Larsa said it because she was having problems walking um, in her shoes. And they're like, I'll take your shoes off. She's like, I don't want to step on devil's land. Like exactly because like, you don't want your feet touching the ground that all that energy is kind of absorbed into, right? Um, but nonetheless, the ladies go use the restroom and Julie is having a full on panic attack. I mean, I'm like heartbroken for her. I felt so horrible that she had to sit through that. And God only knows how long they were there. We saw small snippets of things. So, you know, and I can't imagine it was like not a long day on that boat because again, that poor man, I hope he got paid an astronomical amount of money for having to push that boat around with all those people, the camera guys, the audio people and the cast with that one stick. And as Lisa said, doesn't even have a spoon on the bottom. Okay. So the ladies get back on the boat, they're ready to go. But then now Gertie is feeling nauseous and then she starts vomiting and she's really, really having a horrible time. And I don't know if it was just the as they mentioned the altitude they were at a higher altitude which i didn't realize that mexico city was that high up but apparently it is i've never been to mexico city yet um but she's throwing up she's throwing up her guts and obviously this poor thing is already dealing with cancer she's had two surgeries she's still showing up on this trip she's trying to hang in there but it's clearly it's it you know it's winning so the ladies get back to uh, land and they get off the boat. And the first thing that is advised maybe to help her with her throwing up is Marisol's like, let's get her a milkshake. And I was like, what? I would not, that's the last thing I would want is a milkshake if I'm vomiting. Like that's not, like maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing something. I think actually yesterday when I was on live, a lot of you said milkshakes are good for heartburn when you're pregnant, which that makes sense. But throwing up, I don't think that that's, I feel like that would make you throw up more. No, correct me if I'm wrong. If you're watching on YouTube, comment down below. If that, is that a thing? Like milkshakes help with nausea and like throwing up? Something new I've never heard of. But nonetheless, uh, the ambulance comes. Clearly she's dehydrated. They give her an IV. Thank God Nicole's there, Dr. Nicole, because listen, I would want to be on a cast where there's like either a nurse or a doctor for sure. Not Anne Marie, but like a Dr. Nicole. Um, because it would be more comforting. There's just something more comforting when you know that someone there is going to understand things. And it, it was nice to see. Again, I love this friendship between Nicole and Gertie. It's so authentic, but it, Nicole is just such a beautiful spirit. And I love her on this show. It's such a great decision to cast her. Um, but yeah, so she's in the ambulance with Gertie. Gertie's hooked up to an IV. They get her back on track, thankfully. And then, um, which another thing that stood out, there was no water on this, or it didn't seem like there was any water on this boat. So if she was dehydrated, like what were they drinking? They, they probably just had alcohol um, on the gondola. But yeah, there was no water. And she was clearly dehydrated. And I'm sure the altitude, as they mentioned, um, impacted her. So now the ladies have to get ready to go support Adriana because that, one of the reasons why we're here is, you know, Adriana's performing at Pride and she's going to be hitting the stage and the ladies are all ready to come support her. One funny moment was Julia came down. She's so cute. Julia was all dressed up and she had made this poster board <laughs> and she spelled Adriana's name wrong, right? So then in her interview, the, the person asking the questions is like, well, how do you have her in your phone? And she spells it out. It, like she has it written in her phone wrong. So it makes sense why she always thinks that that's how you spell it. I'm not sure why it wasn't corrected before that. Like, did she ever not write it out before? And Adriana was like, that's not how you spell my name, girl. Um... So the ladies are ready, ready to rally, which this is the other reason why I love this cast. As much shit as this woman, Adriana, tries to pull on a lot of these ladies, 
they still rally for her. And I love it because that's what a like friendship kind of is. You always have the one messy person, but you still love them. You still give them a pass and you still show up for them and support them. So it was nice to see them all kind of congregate. Now, we're not sure what kind of performance we're going to be getting from Adriana, but she looked amazing. I have to say her little, her costume was, was fantastic. It was on par for a pride parade for sure. Um, but it kind of, <laughs> this is why I also love Audrey. She lives up here, which I'm all for being delusional. That's how you make your dreams come true. The more delusional, the better. But she was like, wow, this is like Beyonce status. As if like the 200,000 people there were only there to watch her perform. Um, it was just hilarious. But she did end up lip syncing, which... If you remember, she had said, I don't want to lip sync because I want to talk to my fans. And uh, I think they did a little shady edit where they were trying to show Adriana not like lip syncing directly to the words or it wasn't in sync with what the word like. It, it, I felt like that was like shady editing. I don't think she was that bad of a lip syncer, but she did a really good job. I have to say, I was a little concerned based on the rehearsal that she had. I was like, I don't know how she's going to be able to pull that off. She doesn't even know a lot of the choreography. She can't even be lifted up without like tumbling to the side. But they they got through it, thankfully. Um, seemed like everyone was excited for her. Everyone was there, you know, giving her praise. The ladies were obviously happy to support it. And then from there, they head back to uh, go and get ready, rest up and get ready for the pride party that's at the Mondrian. Now, this is the part of the episode where like the episode starts off all chaotic and like crazy. Then we have the, the middle of it where it's like, okay, now we're, we're having fun. And, but now we're going right back down into the dungeon, dungeon's lair because I, I just knew when the ladies started to come together for the party, the things were gonna pop off, okay? So the ladies all go to Alexia's room. I think it was Alexia's room. And they're having drinks, pre-gaming, as you should. And, you know, at this point, Kiki and Lisa are kind of, well, at least Kiki, I think, is ready to move on from the gondola situation with throwing the juice box and, like, having the back and forth with her. Lisa, though, for some reason, is still kind of digging at Kiki, but trying to make it a joke. Like, oh, are you going to fight me again? And, like, they clip back to all these little things um, where they're interacting. And she brings it up again. She's like, oh, are you, you going to try to fight me again? Like, and I think Kiki at that point was just like, look, I can't keep doing this back and forth with you over this like stop bringing it up can we just move on and the ladies some of the ladies nicole alexia lisa they go out onto the patio and they're having drinks and julia has now entered now julia is really she's really grown as a housewife and i'm really proud of her actually because she's like this episode i was like wow she did this with as much integrity as you you can have with trying to start crap right for for drama but she's julia's getting her drink and she overhears larsa and kiki talking about the whole situation with lisa and kiki is very much like yes she is entitled meaning lisa and you know she just laid on her back and was able to get millions which was a shady comment but kiki's point is that she has had to work very hard for everything that she has up until this point. And she's alone. And she has shared that she was thrown out when she was 15 with a backpack in the rain. Very sad story. Very, very humble beginnings, which is another reason why she was so triggered on that boat ride when Lisa was doing all those, you know, behaving that way. So I'm sympathizing with Kiki here at this point. But Julia overhears the conversation, takes herself outside, goes and sits with the rest of the ladies and then immediately tells Lisa, Kiki just called you entitled and that, you know, basically like get your head out of your ass. Now, I can understand from some of the other ladies point, like this probably wasn't the time to bring this up when we're about to go to a party and in normal life, 
in real life without cameras involved, maybe I would have been a whole, I would have been right all behind that. Like, don't bring this up right now. We're all trying to go out and have a good time, but we are filming a show. And Julia knows that she's got to be able to get in there. This was her getting in there. However, she didn't say anything that was like over-exaggerating anything. She didn't try to make it spicier than it was. She just was relaying the information. And I think from Julia's point as well, is that it's not just Kiki that feels this way. Yes, Kiki may be more vocal because she's more triggered by Lisa and the way Lisa came at her on the boat. But when they get to the party, Julia continues to tell Lisa, listen, the whole group feels this way. You know, we all have had your back. We've all been there to support you. We just feel like it's been a year now. You need to kind of snap out of it. And again, it's not for anybody to tell someone when they need to move on from something. I don't, I don't agree with that. However, when you're in this group all the time and all you can talk about is Lenny, but you're in another relationship with Jody and we hear hardly anything about him. Yeah, I think after a while, it's like, okay, what else is going on? What else? How are you and Jody? Like, tell us more about that. But we don't. We just keep hearing the drama between her and Lenny. And I get that this consumes Lisa, so I'm not trying to be insensitive and say like, oh, well, you need to move on. It's, it's not that simple. I get it. But you're literally dumping on your friends every time you see them and they're exhausted. And so Julia was just relaying that to her in a, and what I felt was a loving way. It wasn't, wasn't like she was throwing everyone under the bus. She was just speaking what everyone else talks about in regards to this. She wanted Lisa to know, and that's what real friends do. You hold each other accountable. You tell each other the truth. And sometimes it's uncomfortable, but you know what? If your friends don't tell you the truth, who will, right? So. I didn't find that to be super shady. Yeah, it was shady because it was like maybe the wrong timing, but clearly this impacted Lisa. And so she kind of goes back into her hole and she's upset. It's clear she's upset. You see it on her face. Larsa notices it. Nicole notices it. And now Lisa's ready to go. She doesn't want to be at this party anymore. So now all the ladies head back upstairs because Lisa is not going to enjoy the night. And if she can't enjoy it, it seems like no one else should be able to either. Even though it was their choice, they didn't have to go up with her, but we're here together. We'll leave together. So they go back up to Alexia's room and they continue to talk. Now, I'm not always in agreement with Larsa or how she behaves, specifically with the Gertie stuff earlier in the season. But the last few episodes, I've been agreeing with Larsa and I've been like, you know what? She's speaking the truth. And Larsa has been friends with Lisa a long time. So if anyone should be able to be that that transparent with Lisa, it should be Larsa. And Larsa did tell Lisa in that moment, like, I didn't like the way you treated Kiki on the gondola because it was unnecessary. It's not like you to behave like that. And you basically triggered that response from her and now you're playing victim and like that's just not cool right so kiki tries to explain to lisa basically like look we understand you're going through a lot but i'm also i go through a lot too i have two kids nobody's helping me i came from nothing i bust my ass to be here and in her interview she says look Lisa may be going through a tough time, but she's got her health. Her kids are healthy. She has a new guy in her life that is supporting her. Like, that should be all that's important. But it seems like from Kiki's vantage point, all Lisa's concerned about is the moolah, which that's probably not completely incorrect because she's accustomed to this lifestyle, but she's basically had to be punished for it in other ways, emotionally, mentally, and she's really paying for it now. And I think a lot of Lisa's reaction is she's angry with herself. That's my take on it. I think she's reacting a lot based on how she feels about herself as well. I think this has impacted her self-esteem. I think she's questioning a lot of things in her life, her choices, her, her ability to just know what life's going to be like 
She doesn't know what that looks like for her because all she's really known is a Star Island home and having access to whatever she needed whenever she wanted. But, you know, to be fair, Kiki also brings up, well, you never really ask me anything about what's going on in my life. And do you even know my son's name? Now, this stumps Lisa because she doesn't clearly know Kiki's son's name. She probably doesn't even know that Kiki has all this stuff going on. So Kiki is taking this moment to be vulnerable and to share. And she gets emotional and she says, you know, it really triggered me on that boat when you kept talking like that because I grew up in a house like that, you know? So when you're saying making all these comments, now again, I will preface, I don't think that Lisa meant the dog food situation in the way that it was taken, but considering all the other things that were said, I would have probably taken it that way too. It's a sensitive thing. And sometimes... Lisa seems like she's in her own bubble. And as of late, she's really in the thick of that bubble and she's not seeing anything else outside of it. And so when Kiki's expressing this to her, she gets emotional and she's just trying to let her know like where she's coming from. And normally after hearing that, you would think that would be enough for the other person to say, wow, okay, I was an asshole. That was really insensitive. Now hearing that, I understand why you felt that way. I'm so sorry. I don't, I don't ever want to be like that to you. You're my friend. I don't know what was going on with Lisa or what, what she thought Kiki was trying to bring all this stuff up for, but she turned around and her response to all of that, now Kiki's like in full on tears. She's really putting herself out there, which is probably not easy for her to do, by the way. Lisa turns around and says, I'm sorry, Kiki, I'm not a therapist. I can't fix your childhood trauma. Wow, really? So that's the response? That's what you thought? So again, it gives off this like, that's your problem, not my problem. I have my own stuff to deal with, which is fine. I'm not saying it, needs to be Lisa's problem but at the same time we're all friends like show show some empathy show some sympathy and compassion like this this woman's been through a lot too and from where you're sitting the the stuff that Kiki's gone through is a hell of a lot worse than what you're actually dealing with you know what I mean in the scheme of things well Kiki had it that was it that was it and I said this on my recap uh with Caitlin, when she recapped Miami with me last week, you know, I, when I saw the clip of Kiki saying this to Lisa, when she says, maybe it's karma, what's happening with you and Lenny, I was like, oh, that's really, really mean and harsh. But now watching how things have played out, I was like, I probably would have gone as low as Kiki did too, because at what point do you just keep letting someone keep being insensitive like that, right? So Kiki gets up and she's done. She's, she's had enough of Lisa and the antics and, and, you know, after sharing all her vulnerabilities to be told, I'm not a therapist, I can't fix your childhood trauma, which that's not what Kiki was telling her those things for. She then turns around and gags everyone because she says, maybe what's happening with you and Lenny is your karma. Yeah. So maybe that's, that's what you get basically and storms out. Now, obviously this is like a shock to the rest of the women. So they're like, oh my God. But like, honestly, where Kiki's sitting, it's like, who do you think you are? You know, like, I get that. I get that wholeheartedly. Like, I, listen, I can be a bit of a bulldog when I'm pushed. And so like, I, I can go there too. And so I understood in that moment, I empathize with Kiki. She was hurt. She was hurt. Um, and Lisa was in shock. I think she... I hope Lisa absorbs this and doesn't try to victimize herself again in the situation because of what Kiki said. Now, I know normally we shouldn't say things like that and we shouldn't lead with talking that way to our friends. However, I feel like Kiki was pushed. And also, I think next season, we need Kiki full time. We need her full time. She is such an essential piece to this cast she brings such a i love kiki i she is the best energy she's fun she's light she's like got a great sense of humor she's been through shit that's normally where people get their sense of humor from but nonetheless 
I love this woman. Absolutely love her. And I love her on the show and I'm so happy she's on it, but I think she needs to be upgraded from friend of. I think it's time, bravo. I think pop productions, casting, whoever, we need to promote Kiki. Because I need more of her. I want to learn more about her story. I want to learn more about what's going on in Kiki's life because it seems like there's a lot there. And I think there could be some great storytelling. So that's my opinion. Um, but that was it. That's how we leave the episode. So we'll see what's going to happen going forward. I hope, like I said, I hope Lisa can find it in herself to kind of check herself and kind of wake up from this, like this Lenny haze that she's been in and try to at least be accountable for her behavior in the conflict with Kiki and the way that she was cold about the whole you know, I'm not a therapist. I can't fix your childhood trauma. But the reunion looks, honey. I'm telling you, go check out that recap on, um, I recapped the looks. I rated them rather on my Instagram and TikTok. They are killing it. This reunion theme was, I keep wanting to say it's the best ever because it feels that way, at least right now. I don't feel like the last few reunions the last couple of years have been hitting. They're not slapping. This, these looks slap. Like these women look like they were going to the Oscars. This was like top tier. They understood the assignment. The set designer understood the assignment. Now we just need more heavy promotion on Miami since it is back on Bravo because I do feel like this past season they missed the ball with promoting it and having the ladies come on watch what happens live etc we need more promotion we need to put that back out there people need to know Miami's where it's at okay all right my friends I know it was a very very long-winded uh we recapped too but again I kept the Beverly Hills one short because I didn't feel like there was a lot going on Miami was where it was at for me let me know your thoughts on the Jen Pendrati of it all. What do you think about all of that? Do you think it's it's crazy for her to have a lease that charges $9,800 a month for a space? Let me know what you thought of Beverly Hills. Rest in peace, Merce. You're in a better place now. Hopefully some of you made it into the ocean. Some of your ashes made it into the ocean. Probably still have remnants of it in a lot of the ladies clothes let me know your thoughts on miami specifically lisa and kiki's situation because i'm dying to know your thoughts uh but it is friday so i hope you guys do have some fun this weekend or if you don't have anything planned you're doing something that you want to do stay safe out there stay warm if it's cold if you are in a torrential downpour like my my friends have been in California, stay above water, stay dry. And I will talk to you guys next week on another episode. Bye.